So here's an interesting consideration. As we were putting out individuals in this experiment, we were primarily worried about issues of the thalli being eroded in, in rains, in El Nino rains. And so if you look, um, these guys are, are on, well, firstly, they're on nice rock surfaces, so there's a good attachment, so that's important, that's good. But we generally try to avoid areas that we thought might get um, super heavily hit. So for example, if we look right here, this is a little mini draw, so we didn't put anybody in that immediate, uh, you know, couple foot area right there. However, and so, so here's, here's a great example. Here's a guy right here who's on a little bit of a promontory. If I pull back, you'll see that, uh, you know, he's not really in danger of being um, washed away. Uh, right next to it is an area where we do have a lot. There is a much greater probability of being washed away, right? Water flowing down there. And we can see that uh, as evidenced here by this. It's been over 12 hours since we've had any rain, but yet the soil is still weeping. So that's saying uh, that there's a lot of potential moisture in here. And surprise, surprise, there's a lot of little Dudleya uh, growing in this area. So um, while it's great for our experiment that we made sure that these things actually work, in the future, it might make sense to actually deploy these, uh, these restoration efforts actually in these, these water areas, in these areas more likely to get water. Potentially they get washed away, but also that seems to be the, the spot where all this water is accumulating. And so any individuals that we might be trying to recover uh, would have easier access to water and moisture. So, um, so putting thalli more in harm's way might ultimately be more, more successful for the plants that we're trying to restore. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Here's an excellent uh, deployment of thalli. This is the end of our uh, site four. And what you see is these guys are really in this little micro draw. So it's not super massive. The hillside, the, the top of this little uh, butte crest thing is maybe, oh, about four, eh, no, maybe more like eight meters above us. So there isn't a massive amount of, of draw, but yet in this little teeny area, it's concentrating. We have some soil deposition up here, so it's gonna retain some moisture. It's gonna to tend to release moisture uh, longer over time. And our, deploy, our thalli deployments are right here in this little draw. And so you can see the benefit of this. So these guys are all still, um, attached nicely I say affixed still glued I can push it on no movement at all um, but yet here's one that actually did erode a bit I'm not gonna poke it too much but um, this guy uh, tumbled down I guess a little bit from a little bit of high but he got in this little dollop this little well and so he's super solid we're starting to see some sediment that's a little bit of a sediment and, and, and materials have come down and are actually starting to naturally cement him in a little bit right there so that's just kick butt that's really really great so this is the ideal place um, if we put our thalli in these areas that aren't massively exposed to huge erosion or huge flows during heavy, say, um, wintertime intense El Nino dumping events, um, but during regular, more routine um, uh, moisture precipitation events, uh, they're going to capture and concentrate this moisture. They're going to tend to be better for the thalli, and they're going to tend to be better for our Dudleya.